Bonjour, bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Oh, let me see who's here. There, uh, I'm expecting some people that have uh, that are in my course right now. I'm expecting people who follow me on YouTube, part of the uh, Facebook group. Uh, Facebook group. Uh, if you're familiar with the, fa the Facebook group, maybe you're one of them. Bonjour, 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 Jed. Jed, how did you hear about Language City? Oh, what part of France? Also, I'm excited, France. I was going to say it's a big country, but it's not that big, <laughs> technically. But so diverse, though. What part of France are you from, Jed? You can take the microphone. I don't know if there's any way that I can give you the microphone. Uh, if you want to. Um, I don't know how to give you the microphone. Let me see. You can call if you want, if you have WhatsApp, or if you want to use another uh, source. Long Duck. If you want to call me, I'm going to type my number. It's 310-877. Better. I like it. You know, not that I don't like writing, but um, there you go. 310-877-2669. Feel free to... Uh, uh, to uh, oh bonjour Shawin, <laughs> I have to tell you about Shawin in a moment, uh, but feel free to call, uh, introduce yourself, talk to us, ask any question. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Shawin. I had a Shawin uh, email me. I don't know, was it two years ago, Shawin? Two years ago, and I think he's a French teacher in Tennessee. I don't know if you wanted me to say that, <laughs> but and um, super dedicated teacher, and uh, and his French is good, really good, I think. Uh, and he had questions, so that's how we met. Um, and a uh, super dedicated teacher. I wish I'd had a teacher like this, like him, you know, when I was in high school. Uh, so his students are really lucky to have him. He's super dedicated. I mean, you know, teachers, you know, some do it just for the sake of doing it, for having uh, something to do. Uh, and you have super dedicated teachers like uh, Shawin who go out of his way, you know, to do things for his students, I think. Uh, and Laura, I, I've had so many uh, Laura's. Uh, oh, there you go. Here's someone from France. Let's see. Uh, bonjour, bonjour. Is this uh, Jed? Bonjour, Jed. Uh, are you American or British? American. Where are you originally from? Fort Lauderdale. It sounds nice to me. I've never been there. Uh, a lot of people always say, oh, Florida, you know, it's only old people and all, but I don't know. I would like it, I think. Um, so how long have you been in France? I've only been to Miami. Um, and um, how should I, you know, I think when you come from abroad and you think of the, the American dream, I think most people dream, and I think as a kid, I always dreamed of Florida or California without really knowing those two states. Um, and so I picked California. Uh, and I was a little disappointed. I thought that, you know, Miami itself, you, you know, um, Miami Beach and uh, South Beach are nice. But I thought that beyond that, it, it, you know, I was a little disappointed. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm used to California. Uh oh, He lost his connection. You can call back for uh, um, Jed. I don't think it's me. I have one bar, which is... It should be good enough. I shouldn't drop calls, but feel free to call back. We we're on to an interesting uh, conversation about California. Uh, let me see if I can uh, give you. Uh, OK, if I accept Judith, let's see. OK, if it works, Judith. If we can hear you. And if it didn't work, Judith, feel free to call. Did you see the number? There you go. Jed is back. There you go. Oh, I should have done that from the computer, maybe. Okay, yeah, boom, we Jed, you were saying. <laughs> so, okay, okay, what brought you to France? Just the, the, was it work or both work and the desire to live in France? My wife and I It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's very nice. Um, so, were you super excited when you thought about moving to France? And the and so the follow-up question is: Were you disappointed at some point at, at anything? No. No. Not at all. 
Well, because, you know, I think being very objective, I, you know, I grew up in Paris and I think that in Paris can be, people can be uh, a little nasty, <laughs> can be rude. And, you know, when, you, when, they th th when they say that people are rude in France, I think it really, it's more Paris than the rest of France. So I would think that outside of Paris, people are much nicer. Okay, so which is nice. I mean, good for your French, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, did you uh, are you taking you're not taking my course are you um, which one is it? Um, well, you, well you have the YouTube channel which already does contain quite a few things um, but there's the language com where I have my course and you can either buy parts of the course or you can um, subscribe monthly to the entire course yeah, so you haven't done that Okay. Well, at some point you'll see. It'll help you a great deal, but it, it'll come. <laughs> uh, but okay. So, okay. The, the south of France is nice, though. Long duck. It is. Um, do you, how often do you go back to the U.S.? Oh, wow. So you don't, you don't really miss it all that much? It's interesting. It's, it, it's funny, you know, how culturally so many people dream of going elsewhere. But many people dream of going to the U.S. And it's just that the green is always the, the the grass is always green on the other side. I think, you know, so many French people dream of. I mean, it's not like everyone dreams of going to the U.S., but a lot of people do. But I know a lot of Americans dream of going elsewhere just to see something different. <laughs> Okay. Is it popular? Uh, yeah, it's very. It's becoming very popular. We have a few big uh, Texas-style smokehouse restaurants in Paris, and we go all over the country doing weddings and christenings and just regular parties. I mean, it keeps me occupied. Okay. Um, what do you have to say to people who sometimes tell me, you know, sometimes Americans tell me, I think that the French don't like Americans. What do you have to say to that? It's not true, right? I've been to uh, like a pizzeries and talking to uh, the owner in the shop, and I'll be like, "Oh, can I have some sauce on the side?" And yes, they give me the sauce on the side. And the wife says, "How much do I charge you for that?" And he says, "Nothing. He's an American. They fought for our freedom." You know, See? Unbelievable things that people say. Right. So yeah, I think there are some misconceptions. Um, and I do think that sometimes people will get shy, so they won't say anything, they won't talk to you, and it might be misinterpreted. Um, but I think usually they're super excited, almost in awe, when they meet an American and they're not too used to it. So sometimes they'll be shy and won't say anything, and then they'll get excited and they'll talk to you and tell you great things, you know. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, oh, that's awesome. I know, and that's the difficult part, and that's why I think it's good to be in the south of France because I have a friend who, um, you know, he graduated from Berkeley and then wanted to get a PhD with a, a cheaper education, so he he went to Paris, and after a year he thought I'll never improve my French. Everybody's speaking English to me, so he he went to Université de Pau. <laughs> where he, he knew there'd be no one to speak English to him. And he's, uh, his French is amazing now. After spending, you know, he must have spent like seven years in Pau. So no one to speak, uh, no one to speak English to him. So that was, yeah. I just, I'm sorry, I just saw Judith. Uh, Judith, to, uh, 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you for calling. Okay, <laughs> bye. Um, and I just saw Judith. I, I want to go over all those people that I know here, because uh, I've, I've seen so many names over the years. Uh, over, the, over the year, it's been a year and a half that we've had that uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Judith recently, uh, poor Judith is in South Africa, so she looked at the time for my webinars, and it was always, you know, there's no time for me. So Judith is finally here. So Judith, do you want to give me a call? Uh, well, you're in South Africa. You can use WhatsApp if you have WhatsApp. Uh, I wish I could give you the microphone here. And maybe you just don't want to talk, but <laughs> um, let me see. I, you know, I don't know if you can send me a request to speak, but I don't think it's working. So if you have WhatsApp or any other device and you want to call me in the United States, it's uh, 310-877-2669. And uh, who else did I see? Let me see. Um, Meredith de California, I think your name looks familiar. Kazuko from San Jose, I think your name looks familiar. Uh, how did you hear about Language City, guys? Um, Ara, Strasbourg, I think we've talked before. And Laura from Canada, I, I, as I said, uh, you know, I've met many Laura, there are quite a few in my class, and I think the system was a little messed up because there were too many Laura, so it was confused. Um, Meredith from California, what part of California, Meredith? And anyone who wants to call, by the way, go ahead. Feel free to do so. Uh, Sharwin, I'm looking at your question. You wish you used to say that you're going to Walmart, Target. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I would say, you can say either one sometimes. I would say, je vais, I, I would say, see, if I take the French brands, which come to my mind more easily, because that's what I used in France, because here I tend to speak English a little more. Je vais chez Albertson, je vais chez, je vais à Monoprix, je vais chez Monoprix, je vais à Monoprix. I think you could say either one. Je vais à Monoprix, je vais chez Monoprix. Je vais à Monoprix. Je vais à Target. Je vais à Target. Ils le vendent à Target. They sell it at Target. Ils le vendent à Target. Uh, but you could say, I think you could say c'est chez Target. Ils le vendent chez Target. You could say chez as well. Yeah. D'accord. Um, so Judith in Johannesburg is uh, trying to set up WhatsApp on her phone. I'm, I'm just assuming. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, oh, pas très loin de Los Angeles, Meredith. D'accord. So there are some people in here. I'm always surprised sometimes when I get a call or an email from someone who's pretty much in Culver City where I live. Uh, you know. Um, and Kazuko, where are you from? The California, San Jose, you said. Okay. Okay. Did you grow up in San Jose your whole life? It's usually in the US, people come from all over the place. And Laura, what part of Canada are you from? I need to go see Canada, it's right there. I have no excuse. I haven't been there yet. I'm closer to Mexico, so I've been to Mexico a few times. Um, now I'm scared. <laughs> I hear so many bad stories. Um, oh, okay, so I recognize your name, Cynthia. Oui, oui, oui. Uh, Indiana. There was somebody else from Indiana who's been emailing me, but it wasn't you, it was somebody else. Um, I'm in California, Los Angeles. D'accord. Indiana. Um, Cynthia, did you read it? Guys, in case you don't know, and that's why I enjoyed, you know, meeting Sharwin because uh, it was my first year in the United States was in, um, in Tennessee. I don't know if you heard my story on that, but... Uh, I was 16 when I decided I really wanted to uh, spend a year as an exchange student in uh, the US to be sure that I'd be fluent before it was too late. Um, Japonaise, d'accord. Oh, wow, plus de 30 ans, okay. Um, and, um, and so I went to that exchange program and they told me, oh, we found you a host family in uh, Sacramento, California. So I thought, yes, California, awesome. And then about a month before I went to, uh, uh, um, California, they sent me, they called me, no email back then, they called me and said, hey, you know, the host family let you down, I'm sorry, we found you somebody else in Memphis, Tennessee. And I was a little disappointed, but you know what, it was the United States, I didn't know what, how, the difference between Tennessee or California, I thought, that's okay, that's fine. Um, 
North Bay, Ontario. You know, every time there's someone who emails me from a place, I look it up and I look at pictures because I, I love traveling. Uh, so I'll look it up, definitely. Kapuskasing, uh, Ontario. Um, and so I ended up going to Memphis, Tennessee. So I spent my first year there. Um, and uh, it would have been very interesting for me to know uh, uh, to know Tennessee and uh, U.S. history before I went to Tennessee, but it's okay. Um, I think, Cynthia, it would be better for you to call me because uh, I cannot hear you at all. <laughs> I don't know how this thing works. I need to look into it. It would be nice, but I think if you guys can hear uh, the person talking on the phone just as well, hopefully, I think it works as well, right? So, Cynthia, feel free to call. 310-877-2669. Uh, uh, and Kazuko, uh, what can I say about Japan except that uh, for some reason over the past 10 years, I've met so many Japanese people who have become great, uh, great friends. Uh, I don't know why. They're just, <laughs> I'm attracted to Japanese people. Uh, it's been only 10 years. Uh, well, yeah, about for the past 10 years, I've been attracted to Jap the Japanese community here in Los Angeles uh, for some reason. So uh, I I've been learning Japanese a little bit, passively, not actively. Uh, um, Cynthia, you don't have to. If you're in the United States, you can call me with your with your cell phone. You, you know, I was saying it's for you know from South Africa, it might be easier and cheaper, <laughs> or outside of the U.S. But you can you, you can call. Uh, Ara, Ara, uh, two ans. Oh wow! So Ara is in France, and and it is frustrating, isn't it? The hardest and and most frustrating thing. You learn a language, you learn a language, you do everything that you can, you open all the books that you can, and you go to the country, and it's so frustrating. I've been there. I'll always remember, and I did so much, so much until I was, I don't know. I mean, for forever, you know. I started at ten, eleven, or tw eleven or twelve. And I learned English like crazy all the time, every single day. Uh, and I, the first times I, I went to the US, it was so frustrating. I was thinking, if only I could put subtitles on these people, I'm sure I'd understand a little more. But I was pretty sure that I could have understood at least 50%, but because I was not used to pronunciation patterns and, and, and the accent, I only understood less than 20%, which was really frustrating. Um, and so, you know, and that's why I, when I when I created this French course, I thought, okay, now with those tools, with computers, with uh, those platforms, when you, you can store videos, I have a way of creating the perfect French course, giving all the information, the relevant information that people need when they live in the country, not just about opening a book and, and saying random sentences like you're talking to a computer or a book. I really wanted to create the perfect course so that people could go on the bus like Ara and li or, you know eavesdrop on people and uh, and listen and, and understand what they were saying and that's why you know I'm a little bit like uh, you know people who do psychoanalysis um, and they apologize when they talk about bad things and I want to apologize all the time when I teach slang colloquial terms well colloquial terms is fine but sometimes some slang I want to apologize, but I know I have to teach it because I know that if you go to France, you're going to hear a lot of bad words. And so I'm not saying that I'm teaching them so that you can learn them and use them. I'm teaching them because you will hear those bad words. The French use bad language all the time. It's, it's always a little uh, ironic, you know, when I, when I hear people say, oh, French is such a beautiful romantic language. It is. It's true. But, you know, conversational French can be pretty nasty. A lot of times, you know, that's why I think it's super important to not only learn standard French, proper French, but colloquial French and slang. It's it's part of a it's it's a whole. It's one item really. Okay, uh, so he says it's it's annoying and discouraging. Um, uh, yeah, as I said, Ara, it's, 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 that's what it is. A lot of colloquial, a lot of colloquial, a lot of slang you will hear when you're on the bus, when you watch TV. A whole lot of slang. And it's insane how, you know, uh, you know, someone asked me, how do you stay in touch with French if you live in the United States? But with a computer now, you can still feel like you're in France. So I listen to the radio, uh, watch TV, and it's insane how much more slang I hear on commercials on TV than I used to as a kid, more so than ever. And, and you know, as I, if you know me by now, you will know that I'm always analyzing language, English and French and, you know, Spanish, because I've been learning Spanish for many, many years. Uh, so I'm constantly analyzing the type of language people use, the type of words, expressions, the way they blend words together. Um, and if you do that properly, 
if you take the time and you have the discipline to do that, it's crazy. Oh, Cynthia, your name appears on my phone. It's amazing. Bonjour, Cynthia. Bonjour, Cynthia. Bonjour. Let me see. Do I have to? Maybe you have to. You have to mute your microphone, maybe, or, or the computer. I think. Bonjour, bonjour. I think you have to mute your computer so that we don't get the echo. Oui, bien sûr, bien sûr. Comment ça va? Très très bien, très très bien. Um, oui. Um, D'accord. Um, comment vous avez comment vous avez appris le français? <laughs> How did you learn French? Comment vous avez appris le français? Oh, super. Oh, d'accord. Wow. So, okay, for those who don't understand French, uh, Cynthia is saying that her mom is very international and always thought that her kids should be international. So she's been teaching her ever since she was four years old. Is that right? Since you were four? Incroyable. Ah, je me souviens d'elle. C'est génial, c'est super. That's great. Oh, gosh, you know, everyone should have parents like your mom. That'd be very nice. Super. <laughs> Vous voulez habiter en France? Do you want to live in France? Dans deux ans Uh, that's a trick question, you know. I've only, <laughs> I only looked into paperwork and all that, and and visas in the United States because, as a foreigner, that's what I had to deal with. So I'm not very familiar with all that in France. Even though I thought, I think they're, I think they're more flexible than in the U.S. Uh, Oh, that's nice. I'm pretty sure it should be doable. It should be. That's pretty awesome. Uh, it should be feasible, I think. Uh, right. Um, I, I should put you guys in touch if if you want. You know, I should have you talk to Jared, maybe if Jared, uh, uh, Jed, no Jed or uh, or Ara, who are in France, but. You know, I think there are many. Uh, so there are so many ways of um, of of being able to go live in France, um, but you have to know. You know, I think it has to do when you're in France. I know it has to do with sous préfecture. And that's a, those are the kind of words that I like to teach because you know I never see the word sous préfecture, and it's almost like coming to the United States to live as an adult and not knowing what the DMV is. Well, you're missing out on something with the DMV. Well, sous préfecture is almost it's like the DMV and the city hall combined together. You have to know what sous-préfecture is. <laughs> sous-préfecture, you do everything at the sous-préfecture. Oh. 
but it's beautiful. Seft is such a nice word. Right. It is. It is. Uh-huh. Uh, and I don't, you know, I don't want, you know, so I know some teachers, you know, they do what they can, you know, they live in the middle of nowhere and they didn't get to travel for many reasons. They didn't get to travel. So, you know, uh, they do what they can, but, um, you know, it's it's nice to have a good source of information, I think, reliable. I mean, because, you know, I, I had to deal with those books for about 15 years and now I would never be able to open one of those textbooks from college or high school. They're, they're terrible. I mean, I used them for many years. They're filled with mistakes. Uh, things that are, I mean, they're so boring just to begin with. Just that alone does not make me want to learn a language. Um, and yeah, and yes, they're just the vocabulary that they teach, the expressions, you know, it's, it could be the blue cat is on the chair, things like that that make you want to close the book forever. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. No, it's 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 right. It's I really don't understand those who make those books. I don't know what they were thinking, um, but yeah. And, and again, I've seen a lot of accredited programs and the, the, even the accredited programs contain so many mistakes. And very interestingly enough is that all those books contain the same mistakes, which to me means that they, they just kind of easily copy from each other. Really, I see the same mistakes. It cannot be just random. Uh, so that's why I'm thinking, you know, throw those books away, <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Uh, to answer, uh, no, I was just uh, reading questions at the same time. Um, uh, Laura, I've never been to Brest. I've been to Saint-Malo once, to the famous casino. You know, they talk about the casino of Saint-Malo, and it's really nothing. I think I just came back from Las Vegas when I did that. And uh, so I was not very impressed with the casino from Saint-Malo. So, yeah. Um, uh, so, Ara says, French administration, c'est la galère. That's a good one to know, Ara. See, you know more than you think. Galère is such a good word to know, and he probably knows and experienced it. Galère is really trouble. So French administration is such a, you know, a drag, you might say. Uh, yes. Um, Kazuko says she's been to Nice and Cannes deux fois. I've never been to the French Riviera. Uh, but I think uh, I've got a friend who lives in Menton, Kazuko, near, near, near Nice. I think it is near Nice, Menton, very nice. But the whole area, even around X, I hear is very nice. Oui. Uh, oui, 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 c'est magnifique. Uh, I would really recommend that. Um, D'accord. And uh, Laura, uh, uh, Cynthia, do you speak other languages? <laughs> D'accord. D'accord. 
D'accord. Oui, oui, oui. C'est magnifique, ça. C'est beau. D'accord. D'accord, d'accord. D'accord. Ok, Cynthia. Oh, merci. That's very nice. <laughs> D'accord. Uh, I think sometimes some, somebody just tried to call uh, with a country code which is 27. Um, so if you, it, okay. All right. So uh, we'll we'll see if we have more time after Cynthia. D'accord. <laughs> Pas de problème. <laughs> Au revoir, Cynthia. So whoever would just call from uh, Eric, it was 27, the country code. Call again. I wasn't able to pick up your call, but call again. Uh, maybe it was uh, a call from South Africa. I don't know. I've never seen 27 as a country code. Maybe it is South Africa. Who knows? Um, let me see. Did I see another question? Um, no, I did not. Oh, there you go. Here it is. Allo, allo, bonjour. Qui est Make sure you turn off, uh, you mute your microphone, uh, your computer, so that we don't hear um, our echo. Bonjour, Judith. Comment ça va? Oui, oui. Enfin. Oui. Um, what time is it in South Africa? Donc c'est comme euh, comme en France. Same as France. Oh, ok, 6:30 p.m. D'accord, d'accord. Uh, ok, super. Um, uh, how did you learn French? Your French sounds pretty good. D'accord. Donc vous n'êtes pas sud-africaine, vous êtes anglaise ou irlandaise uh, Ici, en Afrique du Sud. Mais vous êtes sud-africaine ou êtes-vous irish ou britannique Non, 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 non. Je suis anglaise uh, par naissance. D'accord. Mais de cœur Mais. Désolée. Mais, mais de, on dit de cœur, on dit, on dit je suis France, uh, je suis anglaise de naissance et après on dit mais de cœur. Mais votre cœur est quoi Sud-africaine ou britannique Oui. Oui, oui. Oui, je suis anglaise maintenant, toujours. D'accord. D'accord. Il y a 9 ans, je pense, ma sœur a déménagé en sud-ouest, dans le sud-ouest de la France et j'ai recommencé à apprendre le français. D'accord. Wow, d'accord, d'accord. Donc vous êtes allé plusieurs fois en France. You've been to France several times then, right? Uh, oui, chaque, chaque année. Chaque Super. L'été? Fait... In the summer? Uh, oui, oui. Uh, oui, oui. Tu, toujours mai, juin, juillet, parce que euh, l'hiver arrive ici. Maintenant. Oui. oui mais ah oui. C'est le, le contraire, oui. Uh, il fait très froid en, en Afrique du Sud l'hiver. Does it get really cold in South Africa? C'est comme la Californie, juste la Californie. Oui. Ah quand même. Ah oui. C'est frais. D'accord. D'accord. Ok, super. Très bien. Uh, did you sign up for a course or not? You didn't. Non. Mm -hmm. uh, L'Alliance Française, par exemple, uh, um, et de temps en temps, je, je, prends, je prends des leçons. Oui. Uh, Skype. Oui. Uh, juste avec Verbal Planet. D'accord. Um, je fais la conversation, échange avec les personnes. Ok. D'accord. Oui, oui, oui. Et toi, et toi, et... 
Il y, a, il y a beaucoup de choses, ouais. Il y a beaucoup de choses. Euh, J'aime bien, euh, si vous ne connaissez pas, il y a conversationexchange.com qui est bien pour euh, parler à des gens de langue maternelle. Euh, oui, c'est juste euh, un échange, une, une demi-heure, oui. Ok. Anglais, une demi-heure, français. Oui, ça marche, ça marche. Et c'est vraiment awesome quand vous pensez à ça. Je ne pense pas que c'est quelque chose que nous aurions fait 30 ans, ou même 20 ans, vraiment. Really. Ouais, et, et maintenant, Ouais, c'est super. Il y a beaucoup de Français à Johannesburg Ah oui. That's how the French are. The French are not like other communities. The French like to, you know, they kind of ignore you. It's always interesting in the U.S. You know, I I run into, I see and I hear French people waiting in line at the store, and then uh, and then you know somehow we have to talk to each other, and they'll they'll say. Uh, excuse me, I, I, are you in line? And I'm like, you know, I'm French. Come on, don't try to pretend. <laughs> I mean, we hear each other speaking French and they pretend they don't know. <laughs> ouais. 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 Pretty big difference. Oui. Right. Vous les aviez déjà vus? Did you did you did they look familiar? Or you never heard those words before? Oui. Oui. Et j'ai oublié tout le temps. Oui. Oui. Les cris, nous avons. Oui, c'est ça. Et le. I would say the, the new, when people say new, because most people would say new, because that's what you learn in schools and in all methods. It's not that it's wrong, but I mean, it, to everybody, it's a pointer. Oh, and this is a foreigner, right away. Because. <laughs> And they instinctively know that that's not what they would say, so they understand, but they, they know they wouldn't speak that way. Uh, and that being said, if you tell French people, there's a, a, a guy, one of my first followers on YouTube was a, an 18-year-old American who was fascinated by uh, foreign languages. Maybe he's here today, I don't know. And, uh, and we talked a little bit about that, and, uh, and uh, he said, yeah, the French will tell you, don't say on, but they will say it right away, all the time. But they'll tell you on c'est con because that's kind of a French expression because uh, people are not aware that, you know, uh, they're brainwashed in a way and it's okay. But as kids at school, teachers always tell you in French and they really mean in proper written French to write an essay, please do not write on, which is true. It's ugly in writing. You want to write beautiful French. New is what you want to use. But You have to be aware that on in conversational French is fine. It's not like it's rude. It's not like it's bad. Everybody says it. So, you know, it's, it, it's good to, you know, it's not all black or white, you know. D'accord. So there you go. Pas de problème. Le plaisir est le mien. D'accord. <rire> D'accord. Oui, ça marche, pas de problème. À bientôt. Au revoir. So I just saw a question from Meredith who says Shawin and Ara had a question about deux versus du de la. Let me see. Anybody wants to call or should I answer the question the way it is here? Okay, I see it. The usage of de, the apostrophe versus the partitive is so tough for students to understand. They know they use of de with expressions of quantity after negatives. Yes, if you're lucky, really. I, I, so many students that I've met, in, they, they, they keep forgetting about the de after the negative. Uh, but understanding why one says les jours de la semaine instead of les jours uh, de semaine. Well, those, 
I think those that you, the examples you're giving me, like les jours de la semaine, uh, les Jeux Olympiques d'hiver, uh, I, I would say you have to memorize them, really. Because, I mean, otherwise I can give you a rule. Any, I mean, really, technically, anytime you have of the, of the, it would be du, de la, or de, because it's combined together, right? Du, de la, de. But if it's just of, theoretically, if it's just of, as you know, it's just de or the apostrophe. Um, I'm trying to think beyond, you know, the mere um, um, things that everybody knows, like part of the articles would be du de la for some, really translating some would be du de la. Um, but I, I know that quite a few of them, you just memorize them. I mean, that's a little bit, you know, for for quite a few of those things, that's what I did when I learned English. I just learned them, you know, the, uh, I, you know, I just learned the Winter Olympics. That's the Jeux Olympiques d'hiver. Why isn't it the, the, uh, Olympic games, uh, the Olympic Games of winter? It's just the, uh, the Winter Olympics, period. Just, I, I, that's how, the way I see that one in particular, that question. Okay. Um, anybody else wanted to call? Let me see. Meredith, feel free to call if you want. D'accord. Um, I don't know if you, some of you got disconnected. Um, let me see. Ara, feel free to call uh, if you want. So, um, pourquoi on dit hôtel de ville et pas hôtel de la ville? Yeah, it's, it's really very much the same question as Shawen. Hôtel de ville, that's just the way it is. It's really an, uh, an uh, almost like a proper name. I mean, you just have to memorize it the way it is. It's hôtel de ville. Just, it's the name of that place. Uh, it's the name. By the way, if you're not familiar with Hotel de Ville, it's pretty much the formal official name of City Hall, which is La Mairie. Okay, usually the City Hall, we say La Mairie. But on the City Hall itself, usually you will see Hotel de Ville. And that's the proper administrative uh, name for City Hall. D'accord. And it's just, yeah, Hotel de Ville. Um, I'm trying to think of similar things, but uh, Shawin would have more examples. I know he always comes up with good examples for those, because I think he asked me that question before. Um, yeah, d'accord. Um, anybody else wants to call? Again, the number is 310-877-2669. Shawin, feel free to call if you want. He might be a little shy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Ara, feel free to call. Um, and just to let you know what you're thinking about calling, <laughs> um, uh, I've been working uh, to find the right person to develop a Spanish course, and it's been hard. I've talked to so many people, so many people, and you know that's when it, you know, it's it's striking, you know, how many things it takes. I'm, I mean, I'm really demanding on the one hand really demanding because I want someone who comes as close to perfection as a teacher as possible, especially for Spanish, because it's, it's a big language. It's uh, something, probably the most popular language. And gosh, you know, even though I'm not fluent, I know enough, I know the grammar to know that I've talked to so many teachers who just, you know, it, it didn't do the trick. Uh, let me see, bonjour, I'm starting to understand more French, but I still get confused uh, as times with conjugation, for example, the various forms of fe, être, avoir, and so on. If I'm speaking to someone who is French and I cannot think of the right word, what would you recommend? Will the French-speaking person understand if I incorrectly vous regardons la télé? Um, it would be a distraction in the conversation, I would think. If you said vous regardons, he will not know whether you're talking to him or if you're talking about you guys. So he'll he won't be sure. He he won't know if you're saying you're watching TV or we're watching TV because you're in the middle. <laughs> you know, it's like saying I knows. It's like, is it I know or he knows? That's pretty much what he'll understand. Uh, but uh, in general, com you know, the wrong conjugation of irregular verbs, um, wrong conjugation of irregular verbs, so, I mean, I think most of the time we should understand, but it's going to be it's going to be kind of bad. <laughs> the French don't like to hear mistakes. I think nobody likes to hear mistakes. You know, they'll say, oh, it's painful. You know, the, remember, the French love uh, the American accent or British accent. They love it. But if you start really butchering the language with big, big mistakes, they'll find it annoying. 
Um, I think they will. The accent, they find it cute. But the mistakes, not that much. Uh, you know, I know one of the uh, mistakes that uh, people make for the longest period of time, once they're good uh, at French, uh, is this uh, gender, masculine and feminine, because they, they'll run into so many words and sometimes they'll just kind of guess at the last moment and they'll get it wrong. Um, so gender, I think, is the trickiest thing. But yeah, conjugations, you have to drill yourself one way or another, I would say. Uh, question for Shawin. Um, in a phrase using a noun as an adjective, noun, n yes, l'homme d'affaires, yes, yes, complément du nom, as we call it, l'homme d'affaires, une voiture de sport, une voiture de sport, sports car, businessman, a man of business, a, a car of sports, yes, uh, jazz CD, a CD of jazz, yes, that's very true, Shawin. D'accord. And that's where I feel like English is more simple. I've heard so many times, English is hard. English is the hardest language in the world. But I don't think, if, if, even if I tried making an easier language than English, I don't think it's, it's doable. It's, uh, to me, English seems so easy. Maybe in terms of pronunciation, you know, it's hard to find. There are patterns, but um, they're a little all over the place in English. So maybe pronunciation in English is not that easy in a way. Um, but it's doable. I think, you know, French is not easy either. Spanish is much, easy, much easier, I think. Um, but yeah. Um, so yes, I was saying that um, I've interviewed so many Spanish teachers and I mean, to me, if you live in the United States and you cannot speak uh, proper English, you know, what are you gonna teach? You know, your language to people who don't even live uh, in the country, it, you, know, you're, you, you know, it doesn't make sense. You know, I can't learn from someone. I mean, I can't really trust someone who, who cannot learn the language of the country that he lives in, in a nutshell. And then again, you know, I asked, you know, those teachers, you know, claim that we're awesome, they say, I've done this and that. And I asked them, to me, it's fairly simple questions. You know, how can you tell the difference between a direct and indirect object pronoun? And they couldn't answer those questions. So, they're, okay, thank you, goodbye. So, I found the right teacher. But it's going to take a while to put all this together. But it's uh, super exciting. Um, anybody else wanted to call or had other questions? Feel free to ask questions. No, no question. No. D'accord, d'accord. Oh, there you go. We have Shawin. So glad to have Shawin. Bonjour, Shawin. Très bien. Did you hear that? Isn't it amazing? He sounds like he's French. Super. J'adore. <laughs> Pas de problème. Oui, oui, oui. Oui. That's a great question. Do we say, you, you know, we, uh, you learn at some point in French, you learn all those, you, you get a list that says, il est important de, il est possible de, il est, uh, and that's one of, and in one of my lessons, and in what I say in that lesson is that in formal French, you will say, il est, and in conversational French, you will say, c'est, for pretty much all of them. Okay, so if you say, il est, it sounds very formal. Like in a, in a conversation that you'll have with friends, it would sound overly formal. Um, so you say, uh, c'est important de savoir ce qu'on fait demain. It's important to know what we're doing tomorrow. Uh, but in writing, in a nice essay or letter for the government, you say, il est important de savoir. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is in a nutshell. And of course, the, the minute I wrote that lesson, the next day I watched TV and that was that politician. So he was a politician. Politicians, you have to understand, in talk shows, a lot of times they kind of forget they're on TV and they start using slang and, and butchering words. And, and when, but when they take the time and they're super uh, good with communication, because they all learn that you know, in, in politics classes, uh, uh, then uh, all of a sudden they're self-conscious and very much aware they're on TV. And, and of course that one day I heard, il est important, il est nécessaire, which is, il est nécessaire, which is the one that I say, nobody would ever say that. You know, that's on the list of the expressions followed by a uh, subjunctive. Uh, il est, no, il est, yeah, il est nécessaire que. And as I always say, nobody in a million years would ever say il est nécessaire que. But of course I had that one guy who said it once on TV. Uh, or saying, you know, il est important, il est, il est primordial de. And 
yes, you know, when you want to make a speech or you sound very uh, well educated and you're in a position where you want to, you know, sound perfect, then yes, ile, that's very nice. But, you know, it's it's not very natural, I would say. Most people would say se, but in writing, you do want to say ile. Oh, that's another quick question. So finally, uh, this is, I would say this was one of my least favorite lessons because I found it boring to me to teach. I, cause, but I see that it's a difficulty that a lot of people face and, um, and I thought, okay, I have to address that. So I made a lesson on that. And th there are quite a few things to take into account, but in a nutshell, what I'll tell you is that uh, if the adjective is followed by just a verb and period, nothing else, it's, it's ah. If the sentence is longer, it's going to be deux. C'est facile à faire, mais c'est facile de faire un avion avec du papier. It's easy to do, but it's easy to make a plane with paper. It's easy to do, c'est facile à faire. It's easy to make a plane with paper. C'est facile de faire un avion avec du papier. D'accord. Oui. I think you're, you only you can only say c'est le chien Delton. Ah. Oh. We would say the apostrophe, hein? No. No, we would say the, the apostrophe, the apostrophe, for D plus a, an H with a vowel. C'est le chien d'Hélène, c'est le chien d'Hubert. And I see that mistake every once in a while in books, it, which is just a mistake, really. Why, yeah. why? Ouais, ouais, just a mistake. Oui, c'est le chien de. C'est le chien. Because if you were to pronounce it like in English, a Helen, then yeah, the Helen, but we, no one would ever say that. No one would ever say Helen. <laughs> ouais. D'accord. Okay. Merci, merci. Pas de What grade do you teach again? Oh, super. And you, you know what I think is so um, frustrating, what was so frustrating for me when I taught kids who were, I mean, French 3, they still have relevant things to learn, but when you get into French 4, to me, French 4, uh, you've, you've done pretty much everything. You've, you've learned all the structures that you can learn. And they start teaching things that really don't matter while well, there's still a lot to learn. But they, I, that's really the crucial point to me where books and schools don't know how and what to teach anymore. Because uh, uh, to me, teaching the passive voice in French I think it's a waste of time for high schoolers. It's a complete waste of time. Uh, sometimes they try to come up with, with complicated structures and they cannot even find examples themselves. So they end up giving you sentences that hardly make sense. 
And I'm like, there's so many things to teach. Why would you go there? Unless because you don't know where to go, what to do. Okay. I know. Yeah. No, not in the U.S. Right. And, and you'd like to be able to, I think, you know, to me, I mean, it's me, but I've always found languages so uh, inspiring and, and interesting. And to me, it's something that it's, it's really too many kids think that it's like Latin. It's useless, but it's so useful. It's so amazing. It changes your life. So uh, to me, there would be a way. And that's pretty much how I try to build my, my lessons is find things that are interesting, engaging, useful. And there are so many things. You just, you know, in all the lessons that I've created, which is tons, uh, I, usually all the examples I take are from my daily life. My daily life. Uh, that's what it is. And that's how it's interesting and relevant. Um, so, yeah, so many kids, you know, feel disconnected when they have those French classes. You know, they see uh, flowers on the d table and think, you know, describe that. Uh, there are flowers on the table. <laughs> and... You know, so exactly. It's horrible. It's painful. Um, I know exactly. But so, see, uh, that's what I would say in French. For instance, I mean, not that I have anything against culture, but you know, when you think about high schoolers, and and if you think that being able to communicate in French is important, did you see my advanced uh, my advanced French class? Right, yes. So, to so to me, see, Charwin, I, you know, why don't they, why don't in French 4, why don't they teach avoir beau? Why don't they teach tu Why don't they teach uh, all those things, all those structures that they never learn? There are so many of them. You know, and instead they're going to learn, you know, that uh, uh, les pompiers ont éteint le feu, and that's going to be le feu a été éteint par les pompiers. Woohoo! <laughs> and please don't don't use that because it's it's just like in English. I mean, it's worse than in English because in English you do use the passive voice, even though they tell you in proper English don't use it. But in French you just don't use it. Period. <laughs> so there's no point. Yes. Right. Right. And they don't, and if they don't really even master those properly, you know. Right. And yeah. Exactly 
and again, you know, the, the you know to to tell you a little bit about the way I think is that from my perspective, you know, I learned English as a foreign language. I wasn't born with it. So I thought, okay, what did it take for me to go from everything that I learned uh, in high school and in books on my own to what I learned once I moved to America? What did I learn? How did I learn it? What was important? Why did I not learn in high school? And that's what I wanted to add and give you in the Advent Friends course in Language City. And that's really what it is. Every time that I hear something in my private conversations on TV, in a movie, in a talk show, I'm constantly writing down, oh, this is a great structure. I've never seen it in a book. We use it every day. That's how I've, I've put all this together in the French, advanced French course. So to me, it's, it, that's why I really say, and I think it's true that you do reach a level of fluency that would equal living in France for about two years easily. And that's still, some people live in France for two years, don't even master half of it. So. Yes. What would your best recommendation be? Because even, let's say, with level three and above, yes, we show the movies, but we still have to use the Sudeep Club because they just don't understand. What would, what would advice, what would be the advice that you could give of how to get them to better understand what the Sudeep Club is without subtitles? Because obviously, a lot doesn't come with subtitles, and they have to get the gist of it. The, okay, so the movie is in French, and you're thinking no subtitles. Well, yeah, I think to me, something that's pretty true uh, for anybody who learns French and who's got a, a fairly advanced level is that, you okay, let's say you don't have subtitles. What I would do is, um, whether it's a word, whether you think it might be a structure, whether you think it might be an idiomatic expression, and be aware that when you don't understand something, you're able to pick up the word, write it down. If it's a key word that you were able to hear, write it down. And keep in mind, it might be just a word, it might be part of an expression. Uh, keeping your mind open to those two, enter them on google.fr and see what comes up uh, as a word and see if it, uh, it's possibly part on Google, if it, it's possibly part of an idiomatic expression and which one would make sense in the context of the movie. That's what I would do and figure it out that way. But really, and the thing is that you really have to keep your mind flexible when you try to learn that way. You know, you're watching a movie, you take notes. So again, you know, we don't have all the same abilities to, to kind of pick up the language. And, and like me in Spanish, I'm at a level where I can, I can write down anything that I hear. I don't necessarily understand everything, but I can, I can write down anything. So anything that I'll hear, I'll write it down. I'll go to google.spain and... You know, I'll enter a word and see if it's a word that makes sense. I see the different meanings because words have different meanings a lot of times. And I'll see if possibly it's part of any big expression that I didn't get. I think it's the best way to go. Um, yeah. But they have to, you know, they, they, they have to really want it because you, you have to make that effort of writing down those words and looking them up on Google. Some students are not willing to do that. And that means they're not just willing. Yeah. Right. 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 Talking about talking about Africa, this there, there's such a misconception. People, some people sometimes. I mean, the French who are not into languages. They tend to make assumptions about languages, and so I always say, you know, I don't understand why in AP they have you try to understand in French African, and some things that people don't understand. Is, you know, in Africa, to me, they're the, the loud talkers and the low talkers. Some some who scream and some who are really quiet. Uh, but overall, the, 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 the I would say, you know, all the um, assimilation. What I call assimilation in linguistics is uh, blending words together. So in Africa, they don't do as much of those. They enunciate a little better in a way. Uh, but one of the things is that they have an African accent and a lot of it comes, uh, you'll hear it, well, I'm sure you know it already, Sharwin, but uh, the E, which is supposed to be pronounced E, uh, 
that sometimes we will skip, they will pronounce them properly. So in a way, Africans will be easier to understand. But just you know, making sure that you remember that the e uh in the middle of a word, pronounce e. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, they're not pronounced e. Uh, they pronounce a. They pronounce a. Like uh, je would be j. A lot of times, you know, then those little things. But other than that, and it's just that when they start speaking fast, and you hear an African accent, it can be tricky to understand. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it is, yes. Yes, okay, no problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> D'accord. Well, <laughs> Au revoir, Charwin. Let me see if I missed something in the comments. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, I've been watching French Un Village Francais, and it, it's great to hear things we learn about from Alexandre. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. And again, I pick everything that I teach in my course, I get it from movies and sitcoms or the way I speak. And I speak like anybody else, really. And I'm objective about the way I speak. You know, I don't sugarcoat it. You know, that's the thing. I say, slowly, this is how I would have said it. But when I was talking to my friend, I said it that way, and I blended those two words together, creating that new sound. That's really what it is. Uh, let me see. Uh, this is awesome. Okay, I need to go back and see. Uh, okay, there you go. Private conversations, maybe. I don't know. Uh, uh, right. Yes, that'd be a good thing. I think. Um, you know, I don't know if you're in the face group, uh, Facebook group. You might be able to do that. But I mean, you can find each other. Maybe uh, exchange emails. Um, you can email me if you want to get. Uh, other people's emails in a more private way, maybe, uh, or you can join my uh, private group. I don't know if you uh, follow me on Facebook, then you can ask to access somehow the Facebook group, and maybe maybe it would be easier to connect. Um, that's an option, <clears throat> right, Loha? Um, so you can always email me. My email, by the way, is alex at languagecity.com. There you go. Um, so let's see. Um, I don't know if I missed questions. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, mm, there you go. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. If I miss questions, let me know. You can always uh, ask me right now. Um, so if you're not already uh, part of our little community, um, you can. Um, get the entire French course um, here uh, with the promo code. Uh, where is the promo code? Did I write it somewhere? Yeah, webinar. Webinar, you can get $100 off to get uh, French 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and Advanced French A, OK? Uh, we just came out with uh, Advanced French B about two months ago, I think, or time flies, so I don't know. But So it's not part of the package yet. But uh, yeah, you can get access to uh, French 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and Advanced French uh, with a hundred dollar discount with a promo code webinar when you sign up. So that's uh, if you want to access everything. Um, if you want to um, get just uh, four levels, uh, you can do so uh, with promo code 50 off and you can get French 1, 2, 3, 4 or French 3, 4, 5 and advanced uh, with a $50 discount. Okay, so that would be 199 instead of 249. Um, D'accord. Uh, what else can you get? You can get two levels. If you're advanced or if you complete beginner and you want to know what it's like, uh, you can get two levels uh, for $119 instead of $149 with promo code 30 off. Okay, and you can choose French 1 and 2 or 3 and 4 or 5 and advanced uh, and enter promo code 30 off when you sign up. And there you go. And, um, you know, if it's out of your budget anyway or you really want to go slowly and... Um, do subscriptions, then you can subscribe. The first link on our Buy Now page, uh, the first thing is for subscriptions, and it's nineteen ninety five a month. Uh, so that's another option. You have many options uh, to be part of this, and uh, you can always use the forums uh, located under every single video, and um, 
uh, exercise to ask me questions anytime you want. That's really convenient. A lot of people do that and use it, and that's good. I love questions. Um, and you know, there are so many things that I think of every day, every single day, and I just don't have time necessarily to write it on Facebook and the, for the group, but I try to think and write, take notes and think of videos that I want to make in the future. It's all a question of time. I have so much to do during the week uh, that you know it's overwhelming. Uh, but there you go. Uh, so I hope you join us. Uh, it's a really fantastic course. I can only encourage you to come because I always almost feel bad when uh, people have to talk about you know, the bluebird uh, sitting on the table in the chair. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so that's it for today. I'll let you uh, go back to your normal activity uh, for the weekend. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again, uh, uh, maybe in two months or so. Uh, I need to see what my schedule is like. That's the big question, when I can do this again. But I'll let you know, uh, and hopefully we can talk again. That was very nice. I enjoy you know, having people from all over the UK, France, South uh, Africa. I don't know if Australia is too late, I think. Uh, I'll have to find another, another moment. But we have people from Australia following us. We have Australians in the course, which is amazing. In the course, we have a lot of Chinese people uh, who live in Canada, the US, China. Uh, they go out of the way in China, it's super motivated. They say, I'll, I'll hide my VI, uh, I'll hide my IP address so that I can get access to the course in China. Uh, this, I think it's pretty amazing, uh, very exciting. Uh, people from um, all over Europe. So there you go. Uh, it's a big, big, big community. Uh, so I'll uh, bid you uh, farewell. <laughs> and uh, I'll, hopefully, I'll see you soon. And email me if you have questions on anything, OK? Au revoir, au revoir.